All right, so of course the tank temperature set point is going to be different. So tank temp STP, and this is going to be, let's say here, let's do new dent tank temperature, new dent. So of course this is going to be a reading, which is going to be sent from a certain sensor or a certain device in the field. This could be an analog. We're not going to get into scaling. I've made a couple of videos on that as well. But the tank temperature set point needs to reach, let's say, 220 degrees Fahrenheit, which is fairly high. And then this is going to be confirmed. So I also want to um, add some more labels on this. So this is going, this is definitely obvious. So, okay, so tank level needs to be reached for water tank. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. I changed this. This is incorrect. So this is going to be ingredient three set point. And ingredient three is going to be another dent. So this is going to be the 99. This is going to be, let's say, 70%. And we're going to go through this and then temperature. So temperature also needs to be. So the hopper feeder needs to be enabled. The stir is going to keep running, but then the temperature or the heater is going to be enabled. So let's say the output six is going to be. Also need to change these. So there's going to be a six. And this is going to be tank heating system enable. So this is going to be an output which is going to be driving a different system. But think of this as a um, essentially an enabled bit which goes out to a system that's going to be, you know, involved with a PID loop. It's it, perhaps, you know, some kind of a water system that is heat up and then it's heating the tank. So there's there's a lot to this sequencer, but ultimately it's going to heat the system. And then the last output. So once the temperature has been reached, the tank needs to be emptied out. So think of this as the the brewing process or whatever, whatever happened needs to now be left in the tank. So it needs to reach the temperature and then it needs to stay there, for example, for 10 minutes. And let's see here. So of course, the tank heating system hopefully gets some kind of an enabled signal and then it needs to be maintained. So the next is going to be once the temperature has been reached, we do have some kind of a timer. And Let's see here. So the next thing that's going to happen is we also need to energize. Like I said, we need to energize. Then once we've reached the temperature, this output comes out and then we need to wait. So this is going to be sequencer output number seven. And this is going to go into our timer. This is going to be not a condition like so, but this is going to be just a timer. So timer is going to be tank delay. And you can, like I said, you don't need to have these as XICs and X and OTEs. This could be pretty much anything. So tank delay, we're going to do this timer and then create preset. Let's say it's going to be, I don't know, 30 seconds, for example. And this is going to be accumulated zero. And then we're going to do tank delay is done. Then we need to do this. And we've done quite a bit in terms of setup, we need to go back into the arrays and make sure that everything corresponds to what we're doing. So let's, um, let's talk about this a little bit. So we always have one condition on the input side, and then we have multiple conditions on the output side. So let's see where we are at. So we're currently mixing liquid number two. So let's go into the array here. Okay, so we're mixing liquid number two. Now, like I said, we need to then add the next feeder, but we also need to keep stirring. So let's see here. So that's going to be four and output five. So I'm going to expand this and this is going to be four and five. So that's hopefully that's correct, four and five. And then the tank heating system needs to be enabled, but the steer needs to keep running. So that's going to be four and six. 
in the next array so four is going to be enabled as well as six and then last but not least it's going to be seven as well as the stir so four and seven and actually no it's going to be four seven and six because the heating should still remain on at the certain temperature so four six and seven four six and seven four six and seven and we also need to go back to the input array because as you remember i've only specified i believe a couple of them so let's see here so there's going to be this one two four eight sixteen thirty two um sixty four one twenty eight um so let's just step through this a little bit so since we are we are feeding ingredient number two and we're stirring this means that we are waiting for input of sequence number three, which is which needs to be 71 or above. So once we reach that level, we can step through and something's not right. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, I guess this needs to be this needs to de-energize. So the tank level needs to be essentially looking for this. But no, let's see here. So you can certainly ignore other sources. So let's see here. So actually, okay, we can do it like so. So we're now energized on two and three. So in that step, we should be able to look for two and three. Let's see. So I believe it's going to be in the next one. So two and three. Yeah, but let's... um. Let's go back. So tank is going to be zero. I want to do a couple of tests since we've added quite a few functionalities. So, okay, so this is going to energize. Now we are definitely opening the valve. This becomes 31, which is good. We're on step three. Now we need to go into step four. Um, step four, yeah, so that definitely works. So we're looking for both conditions. So now we're staring as well as we're allowing the hop feeder to be input it into the tank the next thing that we're looking for is to reach that 100 level of the tank and once we get there we do need to look for all three of those conditions otherwise it's not going to let us go through so let's correct that as well so in the next step we are looking for this as well as let's see So we've added these two. So it needs to be three, four, and it needs to be two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. And at that point, let's see here. So if I, I do need to put this to like 97 to 100. We are in five, so at this point we are heating the tank. So the tank is definitely being heated up and we do need to reach a temperature of 220. Remember. But that's not all, so because now we have all these inputs, so since the level is going to still remain the same, we do need to reach that as well. So let's go into the next bit, which is going to be two three four five four five and let's see here so two three four five that's correct and now that we have two three four five as you can see the tank is heating up for 30 seconds we are still heating and we are enabling the tank we are still stirring so let's see here if everything goes correct we should be able to jump to step number seven once that timer is done and that timer essentially tells us that the tank is ready for discharge. So let's see if that actually happens. I want to just see that process. We should be able to go into position seven. But uh, one thing that prevents us from going to seven is because we now have all these bits which are set. So we definitely need to look for them as well. And we're going to add them in. So since the temperature is definitely maintained, that's a requirement. So let's see here. 
so everything from two and now we are in output number seven and output number seven is going to be discharge the tank so the tank is now ready for discharge as you can see we don't have anything else that is going into the tank so the batch has been completed so it's going to be number eight in this let's just do output number eight i'm going to give it batch completed batch completed and because we didn't really put that in our outputs it didn't necessarily energize so let's go back into the array here and we gave it this but we didn't give it this so this is going to be output number output number eight which is going to be this output energize and essentially when the batch is completed the operators can restart the sequence and they can clear everything out it's going to wait for the next input so this is going to be this is going to be for example a push button which is going to reset the uh, the tank so let's see here sequence source seven and that should already be pre-populated so this is going to be batch batch completed confirmation and this is going to be a boolean let's see here boolean create and i think that's all we're really going to need let's see here so the temperature let's say goes back down to zero the tank level is back down to zero that just confirmed yeah so the batch is confirmed and the position is reset back to one so think of this at uh, the system as the operator essentially allowed the liquids to go out to a different tank for example for fermentation process or what have you for bottling for example but the the sequence of events has completed so let's step step one step at a time through the system once again so here we are at the very beginning the tank is ready for a batch so we start the process or the sequence with the start push button and of course we unlatch it because you know it's a momentary push button now we are in step number two so the step number two is fill the tank with water now the ingredient valve which is tied to our water supply is open as the water fills the tank we start seeing an increase in tank level so think of this as an analog sensor once again reading the values this increases to like 10 for example 20 uh, 30 and then at some point it goes beyond a certain set point and at that level we send an output like hey you've reached enough water level for this tank sequence number two tells us hey now that we we're done with water turn off that valve and i'll open the supply valve for the second ingredient but now that we have a second ingredient not only do we need to keep adding that ingredient we also need to stir the tank to make sure that everything is mixed properly and that it's acceptable for our batch so now we have two of these outputs and as you can expect the level of the tank keeps rising since we're adding another ingredient so 35 and it goes to 40 it goes to 50 uh, 60 and at some point it reaches 71 which is the set point for the second ingredient and once we reach that we of course tell the tank hey stop adding more ingredient number two so whatever that liquid is and now we need to add add some hops and we're going to keep stirring so we're still stirring we're mixing in some kind of a solid into our tank we need to make sure that everything is good so that is open that's on a motor on a drive don't think uh, into that too much and essentially the um everything is feeding into the tank and just like before the tank level keeps rising it goes to 80 it goes to 90 and then at some point the tank reaches full capacity it's going to be at a hundred percent the tank level is, a, is at a hundred percent meaning that we cannot add any more ingredients but at this point we need to keep stirring and we need to heat the mixture so we have a mixture in our tank which needs to be heated to a certain set point and this set point as we've defined here is going to be 220 degrees so of course the temperature starts rising it becomes 100 fahrenheit 200 fahrenheit and at some point it becomes 221 fahrenheit at that point we need to heat the tank for 30 seconds and of course this timer can be changed but that being said once those 30 seconds are done we've heated enough of our mixture in order to deem that accessible by the process so once that reaches 30 we should be able to energize this bit instantaneously 
and then move to the next step, which is going to be this batch completed process. And we're no longer he heating, we're no longer steering, we're just waiting for the operator to retrieve whatever that liquid is. And of course, you can make this even more automated, you can, you know, you can open the valve to the next tank, and then the next tank would also be part of the sequence. So essentially, this is an example of how you can make this process uh, essentially infinite. You can step through all the tanks within a specific line or you can do this for a certain belt conveyor. So there's a lot of flexibility. And at this point, you know, we're an operator and we're like, okay, the batch has confirmed that everything is good. And of course, the temperature has gone down because we're no longer heating and the tank level has been, you know, discharged. Otherwise, you cannot confirm that the batch has been uh, discharged from the tank. Once you confirm that the batch has been completed, we're back into step one where the tank is ready for the next batch. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, if you have any comments, make sure to post them in down below. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.